was like, what would they be checking me out for? You know, that, you know, maybe the cowboy hat, who knows? So they come over. They, what I did was I, I, it was funny. I ended up getting an Uber, wearing my cowboy hat, doing lots of editing all the time. So I'm sitting in the car editing, editing videos. We get up to um, the Hoover building, the FBI building. And the Uber driver says, where do you want to go? And I'm, I'm like, well, pull me up right in front of the FBI building. And I got, that's where I'm going. He's like, okay. Now I'm back down typing away on my, my, with my hat down. And then he's, he pulls up, stops the car. And I look up <laughs> and there's like five armed, uh, totally geared up guys in uniform on one side of the car, five on the other side, all looking at me right through the windshield, through the side windows. And I'm like, what the heck am I doing here? They asked me for my ID. I gave them my license while well, they kept me in the car. Then I, they gave it back to me. And now my coat has 12 pockets. I didn't know where I put it. They asked me to get out of the car. I get out of the car and they asked for the ID again. And I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm here talking to the FBI with no ID. This is not a good thing. He goes, calm down, calm down. And she says to me, and I go and look and I found that my ID and my license gave it to him. They walked away and he comes back to me and says, yes, it was the FBI. It was our FBI agents we were just checking it out because you know and i'm like well why and he goes oh, they didn't give me an answer they just wanted to find out about you i'm like all right i said i'm like can i go and they're like yeah and i was like, okay they gave me the license i started walking away i did a quick video telling people i was just at the fbi building and later i get a phone call and lo and behold it goes to voicemail and the fbi agent says yes we were investigating you um someone called in and said that you were a suspicious character in DC. Again, probably because of the cowboy hat and doing video. There's not too many cowboy hats in DC, believe me. And, you know, we're gonna be monitoring your channel. Thank you very much, click. I'm like, okay, this is getting pretty wild. I didn't really feel threatened because I didn't get near the Capitol building, but I didn't even get near it. And they sent two FBI agents two hours away to interview my parents. And I know they knew where I was, absolutely. I mean, they can check out credit card purchases like that. You know what I mean? So that was my little run in with the FBI. And I, I've got the recording of it. I saved it. I'm not going to share it with people. I just kept it in case somebody ever like accused me that that call didn't happen or I'm just making this up. I'd always have that recording that I could play to someone privately. I'm not going to produce it, you know, on video because I don't want to, you know, I'm not going to kick the uh, bear, as they say, poke the bear, right? Probably a good idea. I actually met a lobbyist for the first time in my life about three days after the rally, January 6th. And he actually said to me that the people that went in the building let President Trump down. And at that time, everybody was like, you know, oh, you know, true patriots attacked, went into the Capitol building. But he said, no, he goes, they walked right into the Democrats' plan. And that's why probably, that's why the um, National Guard wasn't put, put in why a number of Capitol Police were off that day. They actually put them, took them off the schedule. Remember, Nancy Pelosi was Speaker of the House, and the Speaker of the House controls the Capitol Police. The things that make you go, hmm. So he was telling me, and I did a video on it, he was telling me how we let him down by going into the Capitol. I didn't let him down, I didn't go in the Capitol. But it made sense to me because that, you know, that's what I was thinking too. It's like, why would anybody physically go in there it's obviously not an ins uh, insurrection with, you know, they're not guns. The last insurrection was a civil war, bloody war. Some of the highest death rates of any war was in our country with the South fighting the North, the North fighting the South. That was a true insurrection, not this sham of a, I don't want to, I don't want, I guess I'll call it a black flag operation, but it just, I don't want to do Alex Jones, you know what I mean? With the school and everything, but, and he was there, by the way, Alex Jones was there. But it sure has got so many things to question about, and especially this Ray Epps character. He told me to, if I did a video, even mentioning what I get, what information he gave me, to call him the Rancher from Montana. So that was kind of, that's his code name, the Rancher from Montana. And he was tied in at a very high level with President Trump's administration. And so we're, I'll just say family members to just try to keep it generalized so nobody can figure out who I'm talking about. But the rancher from Montana was the one of the most dynamic, had charisma out the wazoo. And I started to understand what a lobbyist, how a, lo a lobbyist works there. And they are just, you know, charmers, just charmers. And to get what they want, 
the lobbying, the whole problem with the lobbying is that the money's there and then they give it to the people that are running for those positions and then they get what they want when they're in. And that's one of the biggest problems we have in government today is the money controlling, controlling the narrative.